Vanuatu is described as one of the most vulnerable countries in the world. Why? Well, on the UN Risk Index, we're rated as the number one at-risk country, and that's due to uh, vulnerability to climate change events, extreme weather events. They measure it on how we can respond to cyclones, typhoons, um, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and how the social fabric of the society can respond to those events. And Vanuatu ranks at the most at risk, um, both from private sector, civil society, government. We've got a lot of work to do to, to get down the list. We often picture climate change in small islands through the threat of sea level rise. Is this accurate? Yes, it is. Yep, definitely. It's, it's like sea level, we've got rising sea levels, We've got increased toxicity in the seas with the increased level of CO2 emissions. And so because of that, that affects our marine life and we're a fishing country. So, so it affects our livelihoods with the food resources. What are the other challenges brought on by the climate crisis in Vanuatu? Drought's a big one. All of our water on the island comes from rainfall. So we're a rainfall driven, rainfall -driven country and we're a collection of 83 islands. So if we've got extreme drought, then we've got issues with uh, wells running dry, uh, with the rising sea levels. Of course, we can get the, the wells are poisoned with our salt water, uh, which means that it's hard to grow produce uh, and operating schools and having cl uh, clean medical facilities, that all comes into it. How do communities and the private sector take action in the face of rising risks? What we're trying to do is get in front of it with education. So primarily we're a tourism and agriculture driven economy. So where the Vanuatu Business Resilience Council comes in is, is the adaptation side. So that's talking about how businesses can be ad ad adapted to increase climate change and letting farmers, tourists, small business operators, MSMEs know how they can change their business habits to ensure continuity of business in, these, in the rise of these threats. How does the VBRC contribute to adaptation and resilience efforts? So what we're primarily doing is we've set up a private sector uh, project preparation unit. And what that means is that businesses can come to us with ideas that they think will be great to co-fund and work as a catalyst towards developing either technology or methods to adapt to the climate change uh, and the issues that we've got with that. So what we can do is help businesses put together concept notes and proposals to apply for funding through the different modalities that are out there, whether or not that's through, the, through private uh, companies doing the funding or whether or not it's through uh, donor agencies. Now, Tropical Cyclone Herald brought things into the forefront yet again uh, last year. Um, a Category 5 cyclone causing widespread de destruction in the southwest Pacific, Vanuatu in particular. How was this disaster dif different from the others that have come before? COVID-19. The COVID-19 was the big issue for us. So we were the first uh, country in the world that had to respond to a, a natural disaster while we had our borders closed due to COVID. So that meant that our response was localised. So there was no one flying in, we couldn't get any special expertise. Uh, we had to respond to this disaster. So it was one of the times where we had to all get together and we had to work together with the communities, uh, civil society, private sector, the government, to respond collectively because there was no one coming to our assistance outside of the resources that were in country. Now the VBRC obviously had played a role as you're just describing, but can you give me a concrete example of how it actually played out in straight away in either in the lead up or in the immediate aftermath of TC Harold? Well what's been realised now that globally private sector are generally the first organisations to respond to a natural disaster. We're, in, we're there at the forefront, we own all the uh, shipping, we own the telecommunications, we own the banking infrastructure, the private sector is where it's at, so they're the ones that are generally first on the scene when things go wrong. And that was seen with this cyclone where we were the, literally the first organisation to get boots on the ground after TC Herald. We were checking that the airport was okay, the runway was okay, assessing the damage to housing, assessing damage to the Northern Fleet, um, the Maritime Fleet that was, that was up there, and also checking to see what infrastructure the utilities companies needed to quickly get back up and running. We were reporting that back to the capital, and then we were mobilising as fast as we could. Another good example was that we were able to distribute food aid to areas that were originally overlooked by the government just due to stretch resources. So we chipped in where we could, and to the southwest coast of Santo, we had people up there on the ground that were able to coordinate that, and we ended up providing 35 tonnes of 
both food and NFIs. And we did that in conjunction with private sector and private sector donors, along with uh, charitable organisations we were assisting. And that was all done by uh, Maritime Fleet. Now you make it sound all really easy, that there, that was just a walk in the park, it's something you do all the time, but what challenges t did you come across? Um, the biggest challenge is organisations like the Vanuatu Business Resilience Council are volunteer based. So at the moment the, the, the threat of localisation, while it's been talked about for the last five or six years in terms of humanitarian response, it still hasn't lived up to the opportunities that exist for it. And, and the key issue that we have as an organisation is, is lack of funding. We don't have access to funding that perhaps international NGOs would. So recognised organisations like the Connecting Business Initiative um, coming out of OCHA, that there is very important for us. If we get those recognised at, at the highest levels in terms of donor support, that means when a, when a disaster happens, there's immediately a funding modality to allow us to uh, upscale, put, more, put on contract staff and assist with the, with the response. We're the ones that have to say, what are the stocks in for tarpaulins, food items, uh, medical equipment? We have to mobilise uh, aircraft assets. We have to check on warehousing. And so all of that has generally been done in an uncoordinated way in the past. Now the BBRC coordinates that. There, there's someone there to do it and we can do a faster response if this is coordinated well. So it's in everyone's advantage to make sure the private sector is working in this, this manner. So you've got the private sector, but you've also got the government sector, you've got the NGOs, yep. uh, et cetera, playing, working together. How easy was or how difficult was that? It was tough this time because it was the first one in the, in the, in, in the world where we, we didn't have external experts coming in to help us. So it, it was unexpected, and so we were short of resources on the ground. So in the lessons learned that came out afterwards, it was pointed to the fact that the local National Disaster Management Office, government, though the lead government responder, needs to work closer with both the, the in-country uh, private sector resources and also the in-country responders such as the international NGOs. There needs to be more, more coordinated coordination happening there through the cluster system and that didn't happen as well as what it could. It's not a criticism, it's just we learn the lessons from this and so that's where we need to make sure that from our side that we're prepared to, we're ready to go to assist the government's response plan. They are the lead agency to do it. So the role of the private sector is to support whatever requests that come through. And if we're, we're, we're ready, we're organised, we're capable, then the country can respond a lot faster, which is what we want at a community level. That's, we're all in it to the same, for the same thing.